We're exploring the incredible experiences around Niagara Falls with G and Lee today. Good morning, downtown Niagara Falls. Hi, G. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Phil. What a beautiful morning here at Niagara Falls. Woo! And we're right here at the Falls Incline Railway. There are many ways to take in the falls. This is one of them. Joining me now is Niagara Park CEO, David Ames. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Ames. Good morning. So I've never done this before. This is an incredible way to see the falls. It sure is. This is Niagara Park's transportation link between the Falls, falls View Tourist Area mm -hmm. down to Table Rock Centre, which is our flagship location at Niagara Parks. And so when you go in here, how long is the ride? It's a minute ride, yeah. but of course the falls emerge. You can see uh, your viewers will be able to see right behind us as the falls emerge right now. A gorgeous view and of course a beautiful, uh, beautiful summer morning. And I love the fact that you can go up and down this Ex railway, right? Exactly. So guests can buy an all day pass right up and down up to their hotel up to restaurants and come down to see the falls and see Niagara Parks uh, Table Rock Center. I love it and the Table Rock Center has undergone some renovations. It sure has so between 2019 and 2020 mm -hmm. Niagara Parks invested 22 million dollars renovating our flagship uh, restaurant Table Rock House restaurant the entrance to Journey Behind the Falls Ooh. a little jolt there <laughs> as we uh, come to a, come to an end here but yes. uh, we also renovate our retail store uh, our quick service food outlet so this is again our key location at Table at uh, Niagara Parks parks and uh, a beautiful renovation. You know what I love about coming to Niagara Falls? There's different ways to explore the falls. A little later this morning, we're going to go behind the falls, but I love this perspective here. Exactly. It's it's an elevated experience. Yes. We're coming down what's called the Moraine, uh, down into Queen Victoria Park, which is the, the core part of Niagara Park. So we extend from Fort Erie in the south part of uh, the Niagara River corridor, 56 kilometers up to Niagara on the lake. And uh, we have so many attractions and heritage sites and golf courses, retail outlets, our transportation services services like the Falls Incline Railway and also uh, our WeGo bus system. And what I love is that you can get an adventure pass and take it all in, which is one of our incredible prizes that we're giving away this morning. Tell me a little bit more of what comes with the adventure pass. So all of our seven attractions ranging from Journey Behind the Falls, the uh, Aero Car, Butterfly Conservatory, uh, Niagara's Fury, and of course the new Niagara Parks Power Station, our newest attraction, our four heritage sites, WeGo transportation system, and the Falls Incline Railway. That all comes with the pass? The Adventure Pass Plus. That is incredible. <laughs> it's a great deal. <laughs> it is a great deal. No, and of course, as we wrap up school, a lot of kids are, you know, uh, wrapping up the school year and a lot of families thinking, okay, what do I want to do this summer? I love the fact that Niagara Falls is not that far away. Oh, for your viewers in the Greater Toronto Hamilton mm -hmm. area, it's a quick drive or to, you can take GO Train as well to, uh, to Niagara Falls, pick up on our WeGo bus system. Yeah, and when you get here, there's so much to do during the day and at night. Last night, I took in the fireworks. I love seeing the fireworks over the falls. So every night we illuminate the falls and we have a fireworks program at 10 p.m. Okay, every night. Every night. Right, and then I know that there are now uh, the OLG stage and then as well as lots of rides along the, the main strip there and it's just so much fun to do. Absolutely, yeah. so a full summer of activity here at Niagara Parks and in Niagara Falls. Love it, and we are giving away an incredible prize. As David had mentioned, we are giving away four of those Adventure Pass Plus, plus a dinner for four at the Table Rock House restaurant, uh, which we're gonna uh, see in the next segment. We sure are. This is an incredible prize. It's valued at $800. So here's your chance to win this incredible prize. Just scan the QR code or go to cp24.com slash contest. Your code word this half hour is adventure because we're on an adventure right now. We sure are. Right <laughs> once again on the Incline Railway. Oh, so much fun. David, thank you so much. And if you want more information, all you have to do is go to niagaraparks.com. Right, we're exploring the incredible experiences around Niagara Falls with Gian Lee today, and she's got a massive piece to stake in front of her. Morning. <laughs> Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Jen. Take a look at the views of Niagara Falls. I never get tired of coming to Niagara Falls because everywhere you go, it's just breathtaking. And we are here now at the Table Rock uh, patio. This is the beautiful spot to look at the falls and have lunch, dinner, and hanging out with me this morning is Chef Matt Krupa. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you. Do you come to work every day and you go, I am the luckiest person in the world because that is my view every day. It, it is a nice view to look at. It's, uh, sometimes we take it for granted, but yeah. sometimes <laughs> you just got to slow down and have a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you come to the Table Rock, it is the closest to being able to dine right by the Canadian Horseshoe Falls. That's pretty Correct. spectacular. Yeah. And you can 
hear it. We can oh, hear yeah. it right now. Oh, yeah. All right, so patio season is upon us, mm -hmm. and we have some incredible uh, menu items here. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more of how you redesigned the menu and some of the uh, dishes right in front of us. Yep, so we launched the new menu around uh, late April, early May. Mm -hmm. um, the idea for us is just to use local as much as possible. Um, we're a Feast On certified restaurant, so that basically guarantees that majority of our products come from Niagara or Ontario. So that's the main focus to start, and then we, we build from there. Okay, uh, we have a couple of highlights right here, some of the superstar dishes. Tell me yep. a little bit more of these two, and let's assemble it. So two of the more popular dishes on the menu currently. Um, to your left here, Ontario burrata, mm -hmm. uh, Niagara strawberries, Ontario asparagus. So really this embodies everything about Ontario that we can do. Okay. And then this one here is a main course, uh, Ontario Berkshire pork chop. Sweet and sour collard greens and a maple and bacon and pecan jam. All right, let's start with the burrata. Really For easy sure. to assemble, right? Yep. Here you go. It's all very easy. We're going to start with this. This is a black olive caramel. Oh my. We're just going to take a touch, pop it right in the middle. If you want to take the burrata, take a bit, little bit of salt here. Oh, really? Yeah. And do I do the fancy thing that chefs That's right. do? That's like right. that? Very okay. important to season. Okay. And then this is going to get popped right in the middle here. How? You just oh, dump sorry. it in? Oh! Yep. That's easy. Right in. Do you want to take some asparagus or, or strawberries? Strawberries. Can yeah, I use my hands or do I use a spoon? It's up to you. Okay. Do you, you want to use your hands or do you want to use a spoon? Um, <laughs> I'm going to use my hands. And then do you just sprinkle it all around? Yeah, there's no rhyme or reason. Okay. Just let it fall naturally. Yes. And the strawberries, they're, are they glazed? So strawberries, half of these are uh, already pickled and okay. then half of these are just regular um, Ontario, actually Niagara grown strawberries, nice right. and sweet. And then we stick in the asparagus. Yep. All right. This is so easy. Anyone can make this at home, but why not come to the falls and eat it yeah, here? Come and visit us. Uh, yeah. Of course, right? Um, and then a little bit of mint. Yeah, a little bit of picked mint. Yes. And I'm going to help you here. Great. We're just going to take this is a bit of Niagara vinegar and a little bit of olive oil, and we Perfect. just dress the whole plate. Beautiful. And then how about, uh, we've got pork chops now. Okay, so the pork chop. Yes. We're gonna take a little bit of sweet potato puree. Yeah. We just dab it on the plate. We're gonna take, these are sweet and sour collard greens, if you wanna take them. Beautiful. We're just gonna intertwine them through the purees. How about I let you take over? You got it. Go for it. You seem to do a better job than me. <laughs> Right. And again, uh, one thing I have to ask with pork, how do you keep it moist? Because I struggle with uh, with pork when I cook. So here we do yeah. a 24 hour brine. So it gets oh. maple, syrup, maple syrup, brown sugar and salt. Right. Sits in that for about 24 hours. And then we take it out dry and then just simply grill it. Love it. As you're assembling this, I just want to let our viewers know at home, we have an incredible prize here. So we are giving away four Adventure Pass Plus, plus four to dine right here at the Table Rock House restaurant where you can hang out with Chef Matt Krupa. Uh, and for your chance to win this incredible prize valued at $800, all you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that QR code on the screen. Your code word this half hour is patio season. Uh, so again, that code word is patio season. Good luck. Again, that's an $800 value. I'm going to try this pork chop. Chef Matt, is it okay if I dig right in? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's and my congratulations. Thank you for me. Congratulations on all your success. Every time you come to Niagara Falls, the views are breathtaking no matter where you go. And what I love is that all the attractions here bring you back to the falls. So it's so incredible. We're having a fun time here this morning. And here's a little tip. When you come here, you get a free hydro facial. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Giles joins me now from Niagara Parks. Good morning. Good morning, G. Thank you for my free facial. The mist is great for <laughs> the skin. Anytime. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of history related to uh, Niagara Falls. Tell me a little bit more of the renovations that have taken place here at the Table Rock Center and the history behind it. Sure. So Table Rock Center dates back to the 1800s. The spot we're standing really is kind of an iconic spot for, you know, tourism in the area, dating back several centuries. Um, Table Rock Center, the building that we see behind us, back to the 1800s. The original structure that we've built onto a few times, uh, built in 1925 and then renovations since. Uh, the most recent, which we completed just a few weeks ago. 
And when visitors come here, this is really a great starting point. Yeah. So about 4 million people a year uh, walk through the doors of this building, and it's, it's really a starting point for people when they begin their journey here um, at Niagara Parks. They're starting at Table Rock Center a lot of the time. And so when you come here, um, it's been renovated. Tell me a little bit of the artwork that you see inside the center. Sure. So uh, we've updated the visitor experience at Journey Behind the Falls. So obviously when everybody comes to Journey Behind the Falls, uh, the headline is the falls themselves standing at the base. Uh, it's hard to top that. What we've really done is try to expand that visitor experience and really add some new exhibits uh, in the visitor queuing areas around the elevators that, you know, when people are waiting to, to go down and see the falls, uh, there's engaging new content. So exhibits that, you know, talk about the erosion of the falls, the history of the area from a tourism perspective, and also the indigenous history of the area, because uh, that actually dates back about 13,000 years, which predates the formation of Niagara Falls. It's crazy that is. I love it. I'm a history buff. I love all of that. And then, of course, journey behind the falls. We're going to take a head down to the falls here, because honestly, the view is spectacular. <laughs> even on a mystic day like today. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more of, um, I learned something, the river flows from south to north. Yeah, the, well, where we're standing today, yeah. um, you know, is the falls weren't always located where they are. They were actually located uh, about 12 kilometers downriver. Wow. Uh, and they've moved back and eroded over time. Uh, so over about 12,000 years, uh, and they've moved back to the point that they are now. And that's something that we talk about in the exhibits in the new in the new uh, updated areas at Journey Behind the Falls. But uh, yeah, it's the the river. The erosion has slowed uh, because of the diversion for hydroelectric power yes. generation. So now they move about one foot every 10 years. Wow, back. amazing. Yeah, so they're always moving. Okay, and we have an incredible prize. We're giving away four Adventure Pass Plus, which allows you to enjoy all seven attractions, right? Yeah, everything at Niagara Park. So mm -hmm. our seven attractions, Journey Behind the Falls included, Niagara Park's power station, our heritage sites, uh, transportation as well. So uh, we go bus system, the Incline Railway, which you rode this morning yes. with David. Yeah. Amazing. So we're including four Adventure Pass Plus, as well as dinner for four right here at the Table Rock House restaurant. All you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that QR code. Your code for this half hour is journey. You know why? Because we're going to go behind the falls. We're going to take a journey behind the falls next. Again, your code word is journey. Good luck. This is a prize valued at $800. Good morning. Falls, and we are literally taking a journey behind the falls. How beautiful is this? Uh, I'm getting a free hydrofacial. That's what I say whenever I come to the falls. We're going to head over to Jim Hill here with Niagara Parks. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Thank you for my free hydrofacial. I love coming here. Awesome. <laughs> so this is my first time doing Journey Behind the Falls, and this has been an attraction that has been taking place for many, many years. Yeah, uh, for almost 200 years, people have been coming down here. Used to be a set of stairs. Uh, and we've had an elevator for a very long time, for about 130 years. So it's more comfortable than hiking down uh, a set of stairs. But this is as close as you're going to get to the falls. Uh, that's incredible. How, how far below are we? And then this is a great vantage point of the Canadian Horseshoe Falls. Well, we're about 13 stories from the top. Okay. But the full drop is about 16 stories from the brink right down to the pool down below. Wow. And so right now we're on this amazing platform and you get a beautiful vantage point, but you can actually go behind the falls as well. Yeah, that's that's the whole point of journey behind the falls. There's two tunnels back there Yes. and you can get right in behind. And that is really the closest you can get to that sheet of water. I love it. What I love about Niagara Falls is when you come here, there's so many different ways to experience this. This is a very cool way of experiencing yeah, it. This is one of the older ways to yeah. do it. We've also got our, our cool hydroelectric power plant tunnel. So the power station tunnel takes you right to the level of the, of the river. Mm -hmm. but, so we're up a little higher, but this is much closer than the, uh, than the new tunnel. I had a chance to experience that last year with the tunnel and that incredible platform. But I love this because I literally feel like I can touch the falls. You almost can reach out and touch it. That's and right. I was, I was saying that I love coming here because you get a free hydrofacial, but you were also saying well, we're breathing in the cleaner air as well. Yeah, the mist sort of filters out uh, any pollutants in the air, yeah. and if you believe some folks, all of that rushing water creates negative ions, which are beneficial for us. 
You must love seeing all the visitors come here, right? Because it really is an incredible experience. I was getting excited putting on the poncho and coming out here. That, that's really the thrill. Every day to see the reaction of people who've never been here before. That's that's the best part. And in fact, there are already so many visitors here. Last night it was busy. We just saw the boat come across and it was filled with visitors. That's right, right. We expect a very busy year here. Uh, as people join us again here at Niagara Parks. And what I love the best is that even for families in the greater Toronto area, it's such a close drive. It's such an easy drive to get here. Yeah, it's a short trip down. Yeah. You've got the GO train as well that'll bring you down from the, from the GTA. And we want everybody to come join us this summer. And in fact, I've been here so many times, and yet there are still experiences that I've yet to do, like Journey Behind the Falls. This is my first time, and I'm loving it. Great. Well, we, <laughs> and we have an incredible prize. We're giving away four Adventure Pass Pluses, and uh, that it allows you to enjoy all of the seven Niagara Parks attractions, which is a great package. It is, yeah. So you're going to experience the river and the falls from many different uh, perspectives if you come on and the pass. So not only are we giving away four of those Adventure Pass Plus, but we're also giving away dinner for four at the Table Rock House restaurant. So this is a prize valued at $800. This is going to be an amazing amazing prize for somebody watching at home. So all you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that QR code. Your code word this hour is falls. Again, your code word this half hour is falls. Good luck to everyone at home. And again, if you want more information, all you have to do is go to niagaraparks.com. How is it that I'm wet and you look fabulous? I don't get it. We're just used to it here. We love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Jim. Thank you. And come on down, it's summer is upon us, school's almost out, you're gonna enjoy Niagara Parks. All right, well, Pink Floyd's Nick Mason welcomes visitors to the immersive The Pink Floyd exhibit, their mortal remain remains, by sharing this message to the city. Hello, Toronto. I was in Toronto last year at the Massey Hall with my Sourceful of Secrets band, and you gave us a most gracious welcome. Canada's always been good to Pink Floyd. And I'm thrilled the exhibition is finally visiting Toronto. We played seven sold out. Shows. Okay, we don't need no education, but we need this exhibit. Uh, for more on this, we're joined by GM Lee <laughs> at the Immersive this morning. G, I don't know about you, I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan. Oh, same with our cameraman, Ken. And I know so <laughs> many people that are. Come on, Nick and Jen. We need to sing it together. We, we don't, don't need no, no education. education. You need that comic book style Woo! video as well, right? The, <laughs> the hammers and the kids yes. and everything else. Yeah, so good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right, so what's going on there, G? So good. And the minute, well, the minute you arrive here at the Better Living Center, guess what you see? Woo! How cool is that? I'm going to bring in Daryl Brown. He is the CEO with the Canadian National Exhibition Association. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? I love the look. Uh, yeah, we've got it. We've got it all here. <laughs> We're ready. All right. So you come to the Better Living Center right away. You see the pig, which is Indeed. so fun. Yeah. And then you walk in. Walk, tell me a little bit more about why the Pink Floyd exhibition has come to Toronto. Well, you know, us at the CNE, part of our part of our mandate is to celebrate the past and. When you think of iconic bands, what could be more iconic than Pink Floyd? They're, they uh, were groundbreakers for, uh, they've touched seven decades. And so we were given an opportunity. The, the, their mortal remains was, uh, was created by Poe Powell, who was one of uh, two that was created all of uh, many of the iconic album designs for Pink Floyd. He was given carte blanche to, to tell the story. Yeah. And so he created an exhibition that initially opened at Victoria and Albert Museum to 350,000 people seeing that, uh, that uh, exhibition in London. Uh, it's just something that we had to do. Amazing, and let's walk right in. And so that was the world premiere uh, right. in 2017. Yeah. Now it's here in Toronto. I love that it's here on the CNE grounds. Well, yeah, abso absolutely. I mean, it's been to L.A., it's been to Madrid, uh, it's been to Dortmund, Germany. Uh, over a half a million people have now seen this exhibition. And so when people come, what can they expect um, when they come to this exhibit? It tells their story, both from uh, the, the personal side of who, these, who the artists are, uh -huh. but also they've, you know, it's almost unbelievable how much we've been able to uh, to collect from the history of the, the this this band is most famous for what they put on in their concerts. Yes. Um, creative, you know, uh, uh, Waters, 
and Mason trained in architecture. And they did so many creative things from, from film, video, to uh, the, the designs. It was theatrical. You just look at this. I mean, it's, it, this is from In the Flesh, the Inflatables, part of the nuclear family. It was 1977 concerts. They, they didn't know that they still had these things. They were, you know, in storage and boxes, and yet they were able to find over 350 artifacts that really tell the story, right from school days to uh, the, the iconic concerts and to even some of the disagreements from time to time between band members that are legendary. So it's really an unbelievable experience. I haven't met a single person that doesn't come out and say, wow. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, we're going to, in our next few segments, go right inside. But we have an incredible prize for everybody watching at home. We are giving away four tickets to the Pink Floyd exhibition, VIP tickets, by the way, plus a souvenir coffee table book and a tote. This is a value of $500. Here's your opportunity to win this incredible prize. All you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that code, that barcode that you see on the screen. Here is your code word this half hour, dark side of the moon. Of course, we had to there mention that, right? Yeah, absolutely. A fabulous album. I think it was 1973 it was released, you, you, yeah. You know, it was on the Billboard 200 charts for 917 consecutive weeks. No band has come close to that ever since. Incredible. All right, so we're going to show you more of this incredible exhibit here at the CNA, the PinkFloydExhibition.com. Again, for your chance to win this incredible prize, your code word, Dark Side of the Moon. And it's a great exhibit, not only for Pink Floyd fans, but we're talking music lovers, history buffs, artists, right? You forget that this band was way ahead of their times, way before Photoshop um, in terms of this digital era. They were doing things that you couldn't even imagine, and that's why I think it resonated with so many people. And this exhibition is pretty incredible. I'm going to bring in Daryl. He is the CEO with the Canadian National, uh, National Exhibition Association. Hi, come on hey, in. How are you doing? Uh, a lot of people don't realize there is a connection between Pink Floyd and Toronto. Well, there's a huge number of connections. You know, Bob Ezrin, Toronto-based producer, he produced three of the albums, including The Wall. Michael Cole, who's kind of legendary as a concert producer, among other things, he's been managing and uh, arranging the concerts for Pink Floyd forever and is also executive producer of this exhibition. Yeah. But in terms of the concerts themselves, yeah. there's so many stories. We don't have time to tell them all. But, you know, back in 1973... Yeah, uh, uh, Dave Marsden, then a chum uh, yes. FM uh, DJ, you, you know, went to Michael Cole, said, yeah, I think we should bring in uh, Pink Floyd for a concert. Michael said, no, no way. He went away and asked his fans to write, uh, write in. They wrote in and uh, he dumped a few thousand letters on Michael Cole's desk. And that's how the first concert came to be at Maple Leaf Gardens in 1973. See, amazing. And then I love that we're here on the CNE grounds. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, there, you know, there were con seven concerts on the uh, CNE mm -hmm. grounds from 1987 to 1994. And that's one of the reasons why we really wanted this exhibition to be on these grounds at the Better Living Center because it just made sense. For sure. And so when you come to the exhibit, I mean, look at all these artifacts. It's incredible to see. Yeah, I, and, and they all tell a story. I mean, we walked past a plane at one yeah. point. You know, there was a concert that ended up being at Ivor Wynn in 1975. There was a bit of a problem with an Alice Cooper concert in Toronto, <laughs> so they had to find another location. And it was at the end of their tour, so they had a lot of pyrotechnics. So there was a plane that was intended to sort of ease in over the crowd, and it ended up... Um, well, easing into the scoreboard exploded. The scoreboard exploded. I think parts of, if not all, the scoreboard ended up on the sidewalk. Uh, Michael Cole was out there handing free tickets to avoid liability. Lots of stories that we can tell with regard to what's happened here. Amazing. There's such an incredible connection. And, of course, you see the artwork here, looking at some of the images from the albums. And this, none of this is Photoshop. That's what's amazing well, about it. Th that's right. I mean, the, you know, they used hypnosis, which was a two two-person uh, group, a uh, graphic artist and photographer. Paul Powell is actually the creative producer of yeah. this exhibition. 
he was the photographer that did all of uh, the, the phot photographic work and the graphic artist was Storm Thurgeson. Amazing. These are iconic images. Amazing. Well, we have an incredible prize for this exhibition. Four VIP tickets plus a souvenir coffee table book and a tote bag. This is a value of $500. You don't want to miss out on this. So here's how you can win this incredible prize. You just go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that barcode on the screen. Your code word this half hour, Division Bell, right? Of course. Hey, Good luck. It's an incredible prize. And for more information on this exhibit, which runs through till July 30th, just go to pinkfloydexhibition.com. Good morning. We are live here at the Better Living Center on the CNE grounds for the Pink Floyd exhibition. How cool is this? We are seeing some of the 350 artifacts. Oh my goodness, some of the cool instruments um, that uh, band members played, for example, the uh, Ovation 12 string guitar played by Roger Waters on the Wall Tour. I'm gonna bring in Craig Shepard. He is the production manager here for the Canadian National Exhibition. Good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? Good, you have the best job. I do have the right? best job, thank you very much. I'm glad to have it. Uh, so tell me so, uh, a little bit more of some of the cool things that we see here in this exhibit. Sure, I mean, this exhibit, you know, we have the instruments which are really great. I'm I mean, from a musician, I'm a terrible musician, but I love to see them. They're actually played by the band members, which is really cool to see. We obviously have the artwork. I think a big thing that we have here too is all of the uh, visuals that come from the screens, which are audible too when you put the headsets on, which tell a story everywhere you go. So I've been here for weeks and I see something new every day. What's the response been like by some of the people that have come here? Yeah, people love it. I mean, everyone who's come through here has told us they're very satisfied. You really have to see it to believe it and see the artifacts. There's only over 350 artifacts in here that are real. They're from concerts, some stuff dating back to 1977 and before that have been used on the stage. So it's incredible. What was it like in terms of the setup and getting this all together? Uh, it was great. I mean, working with great people is, is a joy. So the people that helped put this together were fantastic. This building was transformed from a warehouse into what is now what we see here. So it's unrecognizable at this point, yeah. um, but what an experience all the way through. And to sit in here now and and see what it looks like is just great. All right, and we're gonna head into this area here. I, I purposely did not want to go in because I wanted to see it for the first time as we go through it live. This is incredible, come on in. The one thing you definitely notice are the inflatables, and that's something that Pink Floyd was known for, is that 3D experience back in the day. Well, that's it. They were one of the first bands to ever do this, and I, what you're seeing right now is the iconic teacher from the wall. You'll also see in here the TV and the fridge. Now these have come from, uh, they were on stage in 1977. Wow. So these are the real artifacts that were on stage going back that far. Uh -oh. I mean, for me as a person into instruments, yes. you know, we can look over here, we can see a Fender Stratocaster used by Gilmore on the Animals album. If we move down one more, we uh -huh. have a Fender Telecaster, which is one of my favorites right now, used on the Animals album as well, which is just incredible to see that. And I love the fact that this exhibit, obviously great for Pink Floyd fans, but also anyone who's a musician or a history buff, kids, they'll love it because there's so much to learn here and see. This is more than Pink Floyd. I yeah. mean, this is music, this is art, this is rock and roll. That's what this really is. And you won't know until you see it. As I said, I see something new every day. There's handwritten lyric sheets from the wall. There, there's art done by the actual artists themselves. So it's so much more than Pink Floyd. It is art, it is rock and roll. And what a great way to come here, especially with the long weekend coming up. It's a long weekend coming up this weekend. Why not bring the family? Why not bring the kids? So we have an incredible prize that we are giving away. We are giving away four VIP tickets to this exhibit, plus a souvenir coffee table book and a tote bag. This is a value of $500. And so all you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that barcode that you see on the screen. And your code word this half hour is the wall. All right, all you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest uh, for your chance to win this incredible prize. We're gonna have more from the CNE in this incredible exhibit and it runs through till July 30th. For more information, pinkfloydexhibition.com. Good morning, we are live here at the Better Living Center for the Pink Floyd exhibition. This runs through till July 30th. How cool is this exhibit? You really immerse yourself in honestly one of the greatest 
rock bands of all time. Joining me now is Daryl Brown. He is the CEO of the Canadian National Exhibition Association. Hello. Hey, how you doing? All right, so we've been taking a tour of this incredible exhibit. This is a showstopper. Tell me a little it's, bit it's, more about it's this. It's quite amazing. Well, it, there, this is, again, a Storm Thurgeson creation. He did a lot of the design work for, for the band. Here, he actually created a, a, a photograph, which yeah. is actually on this wall. And, and the message here is, what is Pink Floyd about? It's not just music. It's, it's sound and light yeah. that makes up the experience. Sound from the birds light from the, the light bulbs on the suit. And it's incredible that they did this, uh, you know, way before anybody else did. Oh, yeah. And again, we were talking about so many connections to Toronto. Right. Uh, this is a wonderful spot for the band. They, uh, this, Toronto yep. is special to them. Yes, well, yeah. Bob Ezrin produced three albums, and this is one of them, The Division Bell. And, you know, this band has always been intellectual, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. socially conscious, sometimes speaking to the political. If I can digress for a minute, yeah. you know, if we go back to April 2022, uh, personally, you know, I lived, worked, was married in Ukraine. My wife is Ukrainian. Uh, and uh, Nick Mason, David Gilmore looked at what was happening in Ukraine with the Russian invasion. They reunited. And uh, they united with Andrei Hlevenyuk to create uh, Hey Hey Rise Up, uh, recorded and released it in April of last year. And it just typifies what they've done throughout their career to mm -hmm. speak to issues. Sometimes it's mental health, sometimes it's fascism, but there were messages with what they've done. And with the Division Bell, I mean, what Storm created here is two heads looking at each other. It's about communication. It actually becomes one head. Oh, I get it. I didn't see that in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's this it's thought evoking yeah. you know, with what they do, and then of course you can see on the screen over here the light, the sound, the display. It's always amazing. And what I love about this exhibit, it really is an immersive experience because yeah. when you wear the headphones, it really brings you into their world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about that when you wear the headphones and you well, see the stories and the visuals. Well, what, 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 the nice thing is you're walking through and you've got the headphones yeah. on. It tracks where you are. And yeah. when you walk up to, a, to a, a video scene, you hear it. And so then you're glued to it. You can spend literally two hours listening to stories, history, testimonies from, from the band members. Amazing. All right. And we have an incredible prize for you. We're giving away four VIP tickets to this exhibit, plus a souvenir book, a coffee table book, as well as a tote bag. This is a value of $500. All you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan the barcode. Your code word this half hour is, of course, Pink Floyd. Good luck. Again, it's an incredible prize valued at $500. This exhibit runs through till July 30th. And uh, for more information, pinkfloydexhibition.com. I love the fact that you end up in this room. You get to see their very last concert that they performed. And what I'm hearing is some people sit here and watch for a long time. You spend hours at this exhibit, so you don't want to miss it. The Toronto Zoo has unveiled its stunning new exhibit, the outdoor orangutan habitat for the seven Sumatran orangutans that live at the zoo. CB24's Gian Lee is there this morning for us, getting a live, up close and personal look at this new habitat. What's it like, G? Oh, Ken, uh, sorry, Ken, that's my camera man right here. Uh, Nick and Jen, Hi. it is beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, we are here at the Toronto Zoo. Listen, the orangutans, they're still sleeping, and why wouldn't they? They need to sleep in and get their rest. And also, what many people don't know is that 14 degrees is actually really cool for them. But we're going to see one a little bit later this morning. What we are going to show you right now is this beautiful Orangutan Outdoor Habitat. Joining me now is the CEO from the Toronto Zoo, Dolph DeYoung. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. This is one of the highlights when you come to the Toronto Zoo. Everybody loves seeing the orangutans. This is an iconic animal yeah. uh, for not just your Toronto Zoo, but for our community. Uh, since day one, orangutans have called your Toronto Zoo home. So to add this wonderful new habitat, to share it with our community, there's so much for them to do, and we really think it's going to change people's relationship and help people understand what they can do right here in Toronto to help these incredible animals. And here's why. We're going to walk you through this outdoor habitat. It's pretty incredible uh, because you're oftentimes when you come into Toronto, 
Toronto Zoo, you see them inside, but now they have the ability to come out. Tell me a little bit more of this space. So this is a massive 13,000 plus square foot uh, playground for them with natural plants, climbing structures, water features, uh, the ability for them to actually spray you with water so they can <laughs> interact with guests. Um, and you know what? It's going to really enrich their lives. It's going to give them a lot more choice control. Yeah. And it's actually three different habitats out here. I love it. And what you what people don't realize is when you're walking, you have these big poles and these lines, the orangutans will be able to like climb all the way around here, right above you. So these are our solitary tree apes. They love being up, they yeah. love being in the trees. So now having the ability to go up and climb, uh, to move around, and when you come and visit your zoo, look up, look down, look around, <laughs> they could be anywhere. And it's really allowing them to have that outdoor space and play and get out and get that fresh uh, breath of air. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, can't, we can't wait to get them out here. It's yeah. gonna be a bit of a process as again, they have choice and control uh, to move into the space at their pace. Yes. It's gonna be new for them to have all this amazing plant material, all these new uh, play structures, uh, but we're really excited over the next days to see them make that transition out and uh, then you'll have a new nose to nose experience right here. I love it. And and it took a while to build this, I know, because you started the construction just before the pandemic. What was this like? This, uh, you know, I can't say enough about your incredible Toronto Zoo team, as well as other accredited zoos and aquariums mm -hmm. who helped us with the design of this to make sure it meets orangutan's needs, to make sure it's the right distances apart for them to safely navigate these play structures. Uh, so yeah, we're so excited to be here today. It has been a long road. Yeah, so this opens, uh, the members can come and see it today, starting today, but tomorrow the public can finally come and see this and they will slowly introduce the orangutans to this habitat but I love the fact that all around you get a different experience no matter where you go so it's an incredible experience for people who come here it's going to be amazing and no matter what you'll be able to see orangutans yeah. in your Toronto Zoo whether it's inside whether it's outside and if you're outside you get to really dig in and learn about one of their biggest threats which is deforestation for unsustainable palm oil so yeah. we're going to have that in place for you no matter what for sure we'll talk a little bit more of that in the next segment. In the meantime, we have an incredible prize uh, to, for our viewers at home. So we are giving away uh, this incredible prize valued at over $500. Six general admission tickets to the Toronto Zoo. It includes parking. It includes the rides here at the zoo, plus a really cool orangutan prize pack. Again, valued at over $500. All you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that barcode on the screen. Your code word this half hour is Sumatra. Um, I love the fact that Chopper 24 is showing you the aerial view of this space because it's 13,000 square feet. Pretty incredible. Uh, Dolph DeYoung from the Toronto Zoo joins me now. Uh, I love the fact that we're showing the aerial view of this space. This is a massive space and I think when folks see the size of that space yes. in the Rouge and you know that's what this is all about getting these animals outside so they can have the wind in their hair in this incredible environment and our guests you know they're in a forest it's not quite Sumatra but we think we've caught a lot of those elements so they can travel to another place to have that magical experience. I love the fact that this really gives you an idea of what they're what it's like in the rainforest for these animals and then this outdoor space completely mimics that. Yes and you'll notice the orangutans up high hanging out on their own these solitary tree apes, they're going to have that same experience, climbing up on these towers, being able to look down on our guests and uh, be able to go where they want to do, go, uh, be in the shade, be in the sun, yeah. uh, you know, play on the edges of the water, really catching those key components that they would have in their rainforest life. All right, let's uh, walk towards the uh, outdoor space here, but I want to talk about why we're losing over 3,000 wild orangutans every year. Yeah, you know, it's one of those stories that we think is on the other side of the planet, but it's happening right here at home. Um, when we make uh, choices and purchase products with unsustainable palm oil, mm -hmm. what you're really doing is fueling rapid deforestation and just chopping that limited orangutan habitat that's left uh, down to smaller and smaller bits. And, and it's so easy to do the right thing. Look for sustainable palm oil. You can actually go to our Toronto Zoo website mm -hmm. and get a guide for sustainable palm oil products. And when you're in there, every time you're putting your hand in your pocket, uh, you could pull out your phone. We have an app uh, connected to it so you can see when you're making a good choice. Yeah. And in fact, the slogan here at the Toronto Zoo is see them, save them. And that's a really important campaign. It is incredibly important because when I talk about my concerns, when I think about next generations, out of sight, out of mind, off the planet. And people need to really understand they're part of this global economy and things they do here 
impact or an animals and orangutans out there. You have seven uh, Sumatra orangutans here at the Toronto Zoo. Tell me a little bit more of them. You know what, they, they range from 57, or 56 year old Pupe, who is, is really the matriarch, to one year old Wally, who was just born last year. And they all, you know, they're all Sumatran orangutans, but each have a lot of character. They're smart, they're strong. We're just beyond excited to be sharing this new space with them. Yeah, and what's really cool is in this outdoor space, you'll see them uh, hanging from uh, the treetop areas here. But what's really nice is for the kids, you've mimicked the same thing here in this playground. So yeah, we'll have the play areas inside yeah. for the orangutans, and we've got the play areas for the kids out here. So, you know, they'll be able to climb, they'll be able to have some fun and, uh, you know, get their beans out while having an amazing day at the zoo, while learning about how they can be uh, activists and save orangutans. I love it. So if you want to bring the family down and the kids to this incredible space, we have an amazing prize. We're giving away six general admission tickets to the Toronto Zoo, and that includes parking, uh, your Zoomobile rides, your Tundra Air rides, plus a very cool orangutan and prize pack uh, valued at over $500. Here's how you can win. Go to cp24.com slash contest or scan the barcode. Your code word this half hour is orangutan. Good luck. So we're actually inside now uh, of this outdoor orangutan habitat. It's pretty amazing. Joining me now is Ezekiel Gadding. He is a welfare research assistant right here at the Toronto Zoo. You study the behavior of animals. Yeah. That's a very cool job. It is. It's, it's <laughs> something that just makes me feel like I'm happy to be alive, you know? Oh, um, I love getting, that. Yeah, getting to sit in front and watch them for like their entire day and just be a part of their lives is just something unique. All right, so we're inside the habitat mm -hmm. here. Explain to me why um, the design of this was so important, especially for orangutans. So orangutans being um, the biggest arboreal species, um, the biggest arboreal animal uh -huh. um, in the planet, a, an important part of their lives is vertical space. Yes. And so we have invested on a lot of vertical space for them um, right there, which allows for a variety of movements. So going up, going down, um, going sideways, yeah. as you can see the O-lines, yes. but also other um, types of movements like sliding down, mm -hmm. um, brachiation, which is kind of like what this um, plush toy is doing. Yeah. Um, um, the arm over arm movement um, that involves a lot of muscle coordination. Yeah. Um, so we aim to uh, have enough flexibility and enough complexity in their environment to stimulate species typical behaviors. Yeah. Uh, behaviors like these would closely approximate um, optimal welfare for orangutans. For sure. And you know, it is around 14, 15 degrees. That's a little bit cool for mm -hmm. orangutans. And also they're sleeping right now. We hope to see one get up in the next half hour. Um, but let's talk a little bit more. I know that gorillas, for example, are very playful and rambunctious mm -hmm. and they want to play. Orangutans are a little bit different than so, that. So, yeah, um, of course. Um, orangutans are semi-solitary mm -hmm. um, in terms of their social organization. So um, it'd be pretty much just like seeing a neighbor from um, across the street. That's type of uh, that's a type of social interaction that they would do. They yeah. wouldn't normally play with each other unless they're juveniles. Right. Um, and that's got to do with a, a lot to do with their ecology. Yes. Um, and their availability of food, their space. So yeah. they tend to prefer spacing each other out yeah. or from each other and just observing. That's th that's the type of social yeah. interaction that you're going to do. Which is why this see. is 13,000 square feet. That's why you have all these towers because they'll be observing each other. And tell me a little bit about the water area and how they can also interact with visitors here. Oh, of course. Yeah. So. Um, in this particular area yeah. over here. Right over here, Ken, this um, glass area here. So they have, they have a button that they can press and actually interact with visitors. So this can spray the visitors from the outside. Yeah. And it's, it's an opportunity for them to play and interact with visit visitors uh, with space. You amazing. Know? And they're smart enough that they'll be able to do that. Oh, uh, come on over here, Ezekiel. And we have an incredible prize. So we are giving away six general admission tickets to the Toronto Zoo. Uh, that includes parking. It includes your Zoomobile Zoom rides as well as this, the Tundra Air Ride and a really cool orangutan Prize pack. Wow, that's a tongue twister. It is. Uh, this is a value of over $500. So here's your chance to win this incredible prize. Go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that barcode on the screen. Your code word this half hour is habitat. All right, we're going to try to get them up.
They're sleeping in because they deserve their rest. Um, hopefully we'll see one of the uh, orangutans in the next half hour. So what you're seeing is that's mom Sakali and she's hanging obviously from the um, treetop structure. Little Wally, who's only a year old, if you look to the left side of her, he's just hanging off of that left arm. I'm hoping Sakali, who's looking right into the camera right now because she knows we're talking about her. I hope she turns around and you'll see baby Wally hanging from her. It's so cute. There are seven Sumatran or orangutans right here at the Toronto Zoo. I'm going to bring in Maria Frank. Uh, she is works with um, all the animals here. Good morning. Good morning. So you're in char you're the director of wildlife conservation as well as welfare research science. science. Yes. Uh, so they're they're up. Yay! I know. Tell I me know. a little bit more. How is mom doing? How's Wally doing? Mom and Wally are doing amazing. She is such an amazing mom. She's 30 years old, and as you mentioned, Wally's just one year old. So they'll stay with their mother for up to six years of age. Yes. Um, there we go. Do you see little Wally right there on her left side, <laughs> hanging? So cute. And this is typical, like they just got up, they're having some breakfast and now she's uh, moving around. Yeah, she's just exploring her um, habitat. We, The keepers put out a lot of enrichment, so she's just checking out enrichment. She's now <laughs> climbing into a box. Um, so a lot of the enrichment doesn't look natural, but it's all about allowing them to um, display their species specific natural behaviors. Yes. So it's amazing. This is so funny. I love the fact that she's hiding from the camera. We keep moving and she's like, no, this is my <laughs> time and I don't need to be on camera right now. I get it. Um, how much fun is it for the orangutans to obviously have this brand new outdoor structure because they can go from indoor to outdoor? Yes, yeah, so um, we're on kind of orangutan time now. Yeah. So we just got signed off the habitat for the animals. So it's about giving them choice and control and letting them decide when yes. they want to venture out. They're very intelligent, but they all have different personalities. Some are more curious than others. Some might just go out right away. Some might take a while. Mm. They're just going to be very cautious because it is a new environment. But um, so we're starting the introductions to the new habitat very slowly. Yes. And we're just going to see how they do. Amazing. Uh, 13,000 square feet outdoor space. And again, you're allowing the orangutans to adjust and go on their time. So although it opens to the public tomorrow and opens to the members today, um, it may take a little while before yeah. they get adjusted to the new environment. Yeah, when our, our, our visiting guests come, they might not see an orangutan in the new habitat right away, yeah. but they have to make understand that it's the well-being of our orangutans top of mind. Yeah. But they will be able to come to their indoor habitat and see an orangutan and we will be posting um, very frequently on social media how they're adjusting how they're doing how they're adapting to their new outdoor habitat look at baby Wally he's looking right at the camera I want to hug him he's so cute he is extremely cute yeah and your oldest orangutan here is 56 years old that's incredible yeah that's poopy she's one of the older orangutans mm. in the North America population so she's adorable as well um, they, uh, uh, Sumatran orangutans are critically endangered. There's around 18,000 left in the wild. So all of our orangutans are ambassadors for their wild counterparts. Yeah. And um, not only are we doing a lot of research, behavioral observations, artificial intelligence research with our orangutans here, we're working very closely with colleagues in Sumatra in the um, Sumatran orangutan conservation program. And through the generous donations of the Toronto Zoo Wildlife Conservancy, um, we're working very closely with them and supporting them to out actually save orangutans in the wild. Amazing. Thank you so much for all the work that you do. Thank you, Maria. You're and welcome. of course, if you want to be a rainforest guardian, you can go to the Toronto Zoo website and see how you can help. Every makes a difference saving these animals. Oh, Wally, you are so cute. So we have an incredible prize pack. If you want to come see Wally and Mom Sakali and all the other incredible animals here at the Toronto Zoo, uh, we are giving away six general admission passes. It includes parking, uh, passes to the rides like the Zoo Mobile and the Tundra Air Ride, as well as an incredible prize pack. It's an orangutan prize pack. This whole package is valued at over $500. All you have to do is go to cp24.com slash contest or scan that barcode. Your code word this half hour is zoo. There you go. Good luck to everyone. Thank you to everyone here at the Toronto Zoo. School's out for summer, kids.
Yay, freedom. <laughs> this day probably couldn't come soon enough for students in the GTA and the city. And our GL Lee is gearing up for the last day of class with a family in North York this morning. G, the excitement on the last day of school. I mean, we're not living it because we're on the desk here, right. but you're living it in person this morning. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. We have three kids uh, with the Ferguson family. They're sleeping right now, so I'm talking a little bit quietly, but I brought them breakfast, and look, how cute is this? Their backpacks are ready to go for the last day of school. Joining me now are the parents, Mina, Kim, and Peter Ferguson. Good morning. Good morning. I'll hand this off to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so they're sound asleep right now, right? Yes, I hope yeah. so. They went to bed about seven hours ago, so they're uh, just getting some good sleep in still. <laughs> are they excited that we're here? Yes. Very excited. <laughs> yeah, they're very excited. They've been yep, eagerly anticipating your arrival. Okay, so I always joke that in September it's the first day of school for the kids and first day of vacation for the parents, but in June it's the complete opposite. Total opposite. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, we're still uh, getting ready for it. Okay, we have a second camera that's shooting in one of the uh, kids' rooms. Whose room is this? It's in Lila's room. She's yeah. our eight-year-old daughter. Okay, very cool. So while we're setting up the yeah. breakfast, yeah, both Mina and Peter, please tell me, like, what are the plans for the summer? I know your kids, 10, 8, and 6 years old, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a few camps lined up. Uh, we're going to go on a few family trips and then just trying to figure out the rest of it as we go. Yeah. We're, uh, we're not really the best planners in the world. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. Not really the best planners in the world. You just roll with it. You're spontaneous. Well, we still don't know what they're doing for the first couple of weeks of vacation. Yeah. And a friend of mine reminded me that we both work. And she's like, wait a minute. It's OK that I don't know what my kids are doing, but I think you guys probably need to figure that out. And <laughs> that was a nice reminder that we needed to get our act together. You know, as much as I joke that it's the last day of school and the first day of work for the parents, it's so nice to see the kids excited. They've worked so hard all year round, and now they need a break, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I don't know if I'd say worked really hard, but they, they definitely spent a lot of time at school. I guess when, when you're in the lower grades, it's, it's fun. They're going to yeah. miss a lot of their friends, right? Yeah, they absolutely. were actually sad yesterday. They were saying that they're really going to miss their friends, but I think that the, once they get used to not going to school every day and waking up early and having our packed lunches, they'll be pretty excited. Yeah, sure. All right, so the Mina, are they morning people or not? Like, I could tell you, if I had to wake up my son on live TV, he would not be happy. Um, a couple of them are morning. My oldest is definitely not. He's a oh. bit of a grump in the morning, oh. so we'll, we'll see how he is today. So that's the one I'm going to look forward to the most, <laughs> knocking on his door. OK, so you want to stay tuned, because in the next half hour, we're going to go to all three rooms and wake them up live right here on CP24 Breakfast. In the meantime, we're getting the breakfast ready. Are you guys excited about all this? We are, yeah, very excited, absolutely. Well, we really appreciate you inviting us into your home. I know it's a little bit early, but it's kind of exciting, and I think the kids are going to love it. Absolutely, they're very excited. They're very excited. Yeah? Okay, we'll see how it goes. It's I've been told that two of them will be really happy that I'm waking them up on live TV. I'm not sure about the oldest, but we're going to find out right now. So we have three kids. We're going to start with the youngest. This is Jack. Take a look at his door, okay? It says, please knock on the door, thank you. If nobody answers, check back later. Let's find out, okay? So this is six-year-old Jack. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Jack. Hi, Jack. Hi, good morning, how are you? I'm G. How are you? Are you excited about the first day of, uh, last day of school? Yeah. Yeah? I was told that you were interested in wearing a suit to school today. Is that what you're going to wear today? Yeah. Really? You're going to put on a suit? No. What are you going to wear? I'm going to wear that. This is your outfit for today? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. All right. Um, are you excited to have some McDonald's breakfast and walk to school with CP24? Yeah. Okay, I love the monkeys and I love the banana pajamas. Okay, we're gonna wake up your sister Lila. Do you wanna come with me and wake up your sister? Okay, okay come on, let's go for it. Exactly how to wake up. Oh, you do? Okay, why don't you help me? Let's go. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, here we go. Good morning. Hi, Hi Lila, how are you? Good. Oh, your room is beautiful. Thank you. Are you excited about the last day of school? Yeah. Were you waiting for us? Were you already up? Be honest. 
Yes, and then I came outside. <laughs> and then I came outside dressed, and then my brother was like, go back inside, they're going to record you waking up. Like, <laughs> How does it feel to be waking up on live TV? I have no idea. Okay, <laughs> come on. Okay, so I told, I've been told your oldest brother, James, it might be a little tricky waking this one up. What do you think? Do you think we can do it? Um, yeah. Okay, wait, wait. Slow down, Jack, Jack, slow down. Okay, we're all going to do it together. Yeah. We're all going to do it together. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, here we go. This is James, 10-year-old James. Hello. 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 Hi, James. How are you? Slack is a few times. What did you say? Turn around. Let's face the camera. What did you just say? Just have to slap him a few times. Oh, come on. Good morning, James. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, you got up really quickly. I was told that you might be the most challenging one to wake up. Mm, no, that's Ooh, not me, Jack. that's Jack. <laughs> Is that true, Jack? Come on my over mom here. Let's play the taco song together. Let's have you face the camera. What were you just saying? My mom, my, usually my mom has to play the taco song to get him up. What's the taco song? The Roblox taco song. Oh, can you sing it for me? Jack, sing it. Hey, Jack, Jack come Jack up here. Song. Hey, can you sing the taco song? Is this how you wake up your brother? What's the taco song? Oh, Jack, are you getting shy? I'm kind of scared of singing in public. Uh, <laughs> in public, this is your own house. <laughs> All right, so shall we get ready? Shall we get changed? We brought you breakfast. Oh, Thank you. Yes. yes, sorry? What are we having? Oh, that's exactly what we're having. Pancakes, burritos, hash browns. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Okay. So let's all get washed up and we'll join you for breakfast in the next half hour, okay? This is my room. Oh, can you give me, oh, very cool. Love it. I'm gonna take a tour of James's room. We're gonna take a break here on CP24 Breakfast. It's the last day of school, yay! Okay, school is out for summer. This day probably couldn't come soon enough for students in the city of GTA. Uh, maybe the parents can hold off on it. Okay, uh, this is supposed to be G segment, but Jack go, 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 is go, 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 stealing go, 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 go. the show all morning long. He has been just uh, right on top of things. G, he looks like a handful. What a kid. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jack is so much fun. He is so happy that we're here. He was meant to be on TV, right, Jack? All right, so James, Jack, and Lila, they're having breakfast. Lila's getting her hair done. The lunches are made. It's been a busy morning. All right, James, how's it going so far? You're enjoying your breakfast? Okay, mm -hmm. does it feel weird to have a TV camera in your house? No. No, is it fun? Yeah. You know that we sent the helicopter, right? Chopper yeah. 24? Yeah, I saw it up there. You know it's gonna follow us when we walk to school. Is it called Chopper because it chops food? Sorry, say that again? Is it called Chopper because it chops food? Uh, no, because it's a helicopter, but I don't know why it's Chopper as a short form. But it's Chopper. I'm, I'm, I'm Listen, busy there. they're showing the shot right now. The helicopter is flying around the house. It's gonna show us walking to school in, in the next little while. How fun is that? How fun. Okay, wow, Mina. This is a lot. You do this every morning with the three kids, right? Every morning. <laughs> every morning by myself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but it's fun, right? It is fun. Okay. It is a lot of fun. Wait, wait. What do you want to do, Jack? I'm going to brush, brush our teeth. teeth. Okay, you guys go brush your teeth. Go ahead. <laughs> In the meantime, you're doing Lila's hair. So, last day of school. <laughs> Are you excited? Are you nervous? Because now they're going to be home 24-7. Um, it's a little nerve-wracking because I just I have to be far more on it as far as knowing exactly where they are at all times. Right. So. Impossible. Sorry? Yeah, that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Being the only girl, Lila, is it entertaining watching your two brothers? Yes. Yeah. What's the best part of, the, of watching um, the two? I have no idea. <laughs> they're, Jack's a wild one, right? He's yeah. a lot of fun. And Kind of fun watching them, like run around. <laughs> like they'll run around and James will be like, Jack, what are you doing? <laughs> that seems to be the theme, right? They're brushing their teeth right now. Peter, normally you're off to work, but I'm so glad you could stay with us and join this morning. It's a little chaotic here with three kids. It is. She always told me it was. I didn't believe her, so I had to see firsthand. But yeah. <laughs> And I thought it was an easy job. The but. two boys are brushing their teeth, and you cracked a joke. You said, that it, won't, it won't take that long. No, there's probably not even toothpaste on their brushes. So. <laughs> All right, so, oh, Myla's going to go. Go brush your teeth. Uh, let's bring the lunches over to uh, their backpacks. And then, are we all walking together? Let's do it. Let's do it? Okay, okay. So we're all going to be walking to school together. How long is the walk from here? Um, An hour and a half. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was like that when I went to school, but no. You know what we should have done? We should have had all of us go into the chopper, right? And fly oh, into yeah. school. That would have been fun, right? Yeah. So how long is the walk to school? Like five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes? Yeah. ten minutes. Five yeah. to ten minutes? Yeah. Okay. So next half hour, you definitely want to tune in. We're going to take the kids to school on the last day. They're so excited. Uh, Jack and James are brushing their teeth. Lila's packing the bag. So much fun. They're so pumped. And guess what? Their friends have joined them. Come on in. You're all friends with Lila, James, and Jack. Hey, really quickly, what's your name? Alexa. I'm Alexa. You? Maddie. Yeah. Adrian. Are you guys excited for the last day of school? Yeah! yeah. Okay, yeah. let's walk. I see some of your teachers there. Wait, is that where we're going to be interviewed? Well, you, we can do the interview now. So what are your plans for the summer? I'm going to go to overnight camp with one of my friends. I'm nice. Gonna, I'm going to go to my birthday party. And we'll have the parents come to you. Come join. Um, Lila, I've got to ask. North Carolina. Nice. Now, Lila, I have to ask, is there one favorite teacher you want to give a shout out to and say thank you for an amazing year? Can I say do? Yes. Ms. Ross. Ms. Ross and Mr. Nitsu. Okay. Mr. Nitsu! Ms. Roth and Mr. Nitsu. Oh, wow. Sorry, look at the camera and tell me who uh, you want to give a shout out to. Your favorite teacher, Miss Roth and Mr. Nitsu. Oh, nice! And Miss Franklin. And okay, you let me know if you see any of the teachers there. If Miss Roth or Mr. Nixon, let me know. No, Let's. Those two there. Okay, that's okay. Hey, what are you doing for summer? Uh, I'm gonna go to a birthday party uh -oh. too. Nice! And look, all your friends are here in the playground. Let's get you guys going right up. Oh my goodness! And the parents, of course, are coming. Uh, Let's go inside, guys. Let's go in. Let's say hi to your friends. Let's say hi to your friends. Okay. Oh, Mina, Peter. Thank you so much for allowing us to come in. Right? Oh, thank you so much for having us. It was a blast. It's so nice to see the kids all excited. And they just gave a shout out to some of their favorite teachers. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, they a lot they, of really great teachers here. We're so blessed. Teachers. Right? Yeah. And it's this amazing. is the part I love the most is they're so happy. Uh, we're, hi, Lily. We'll bring in James. Jack's already gone in. Oh, he yeah. can't wait. Jack, yeah, no, our look, kids yeah. actually, they Shout love going to school. Shout out to Ms. Roth and Mr. Oh, Nitsu. you got to look at the camera. Shout out to Ms. Roth and Mr. Nitsu. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to talk to the kids. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Enjoy your you. summer. You yeah, what do you want to say? Shout out to all the teachers. Oh. Shout out to all the teachers. Shout out to all the teachers here at Armour Heights Are Public School. school? We're not coming in the school, but we'll watch you guys go in. <laughs> we have some of the staff here from Armour Heights Public School. Hi, and more kids. What's your name? My name is Vala. Um, we, um, I'm, I, I'm so, I'm gonna be going to grade four, and 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 I'm uh, going to grade four and to a new school. And, Amazing. And but I am also sad to be leaving the school. Oh, hi. What's your name? Marianne. Marianne, is there a favorite teacher you want to give a shout out to and say thank you? Who? Would thank you. Perfect. To all the teachers. Marianne is basically saying thank you to all the teachers. Hi, kids, come on over. Are you excited? What are you going to do this summer? Play Fortnite. Of course. Yeah. Play Fortnite. Of course. Work on me. Okay. My, summer camp. Summer camp. I'm skating. My name's, my name is Kawhi. Very cool. Is there a favorite teacher you want to say thank you to for everything? Oh, Mr. Nitsu. Mr. Nitsu. Mr. Offer. Mr. Offer. Mr. Ellis. They love them all. So fantastic. Well, listen, everybody have a wonderful summer. <laughs> Enjoy the last day of school. Can you all wave and say bye to CP24? Bye. 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 And look, wave up to the chopper. Do you see the helicopter?